Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alex Slezak and I come to you from alexslezakcompletefitness.com and um, I'm making this video for paddleplayer.com and in fact I'm actually making a series of videos for paddleplayer.com uh, to help paddle players just like you better take care of your joints, better take care of your fitness and really just feel better and move better overall so you can enjoy uh, the sport of paddle for a long, long time and it is a great sport and uh, we want you to be able to enjoy it. So um, this is the very first video in a series of videos that I'm going to do and um, I'm always going to reference back to this video probably in previous videos because this video is really going to lay the framework um, or give you the bigger overall picture for when we go ahead and break off and to talk about some other joints. And uh, what I want to talk to you and share with you today is called the joint by joint approach. And this is something that a, a person by the name of Mike Boyle came up with um, and it just makes perfect sense when you think about why I have shoulder pain, why I have low back pain, why I have knee pain and it gives you a plan and a recipe for what you should do for when you warm up for your paddle matches and really what you should do um, if you're doing any kind of off-season training, working out, whatever it may be because you're going to understand what the demands and what the needs of your joints are. Um, so basically what it, what it comes down to is this. Your joint either, some joints in your body need mobility while some joints in your body need stability. So when you go into your training and when you go into your warm up, some of your joints, the focus of what you should be doing is trying to mobilize them or trying to go through a full range of motion and really loosen those joints up. Other joints, on the other hand, you don't want to loosen them up because their primary need are, is for stability and your body's designed in a really specific way. And that's what my bad artwork picture really is over here to sh show you. What we have here is we have the ankle, we have the knee, we have the hip, we have the lumbar spine, which would be your lower back, we have the thoracic spine, which is the upper part of your back, these triangles up here are the shoulder blade, and then right here well, we have the actual shoulder joint, which would be where your humerus fits in the glenoid fossa um, of the uh, shoulder blade or the scapula, but you don't, we don't, I don't need to get nerdy with uh, all kinds of anatomy terms for you, although that I could. Um, but what I want you to see is this. The ankle joint, its primary need is mobility. The knee joint, its primary need is stability. The hip joint, its primary need is mobility. The lower back or the lumbar spine, its primary need is stability. Your upper back or your thoracic spine, its primary need is mobility where your shoulder blade or your scapula sits on top of your rib cage and that's really what it does. Your, your ribs um, are, are here and the scapula sits on top of it and it slides and moves around as your shoulder joint moves. But its primary need is stability and then where the, where the humerus, basically your glenohumeral joint, its primary need is mobility. So now if you, if you look at this, the body's stacked in a very specific way. We have joints stacked on top of each other. We have mobility, stability, mobility, stability, mobility, stability, mobility, all the way up and down your body. Now, this is a tremendously important concept to understand because most people believe that all their joints are supposed to be flexible and they're all supposed to move and that's not the case. If you want to function and have um, a high quality of movement, um, certain joints have to do most of the moving while other joints they're, they're designed for stability. If you just look at the knee, if you think about your own knee, your knee only bends in one plane of motion. It doesn't like to rotate, it doesn't like to cave in on each other. Um, that's how injuries occur. Your lower back is the same way. Your lower back doesn't like to rotate, it doesn't like to flex, it doesn't like to extend. It will if it has to, but it doesn't like to. And when you, you have a lot of that movement, that's when you have pain. If you think about your shoulder, it's the same kind of idea. Your shoulder blade, it needs to be stable on the rib cage so, so it can be stable so the, humor, the glenohumeral joint can have, it, have its mobility needs. So this is a, a, a pretty important concept to understand where mobility, stability stacked on mobility and mobility stacked on stability and all the way up. So if you think about, if you have some common ailments right now or maybe some pain, maybe you have pain in your knee or your lower back or your shoulder. Well, these are common places where people see a lot of pain. And what I want you to think about is this. What happens over the course of our lives, um, and again, I don't know what your particular needs are. I'm speaking in very general uh, terms here just so you get the, the idea, but most people spend a whole lot of time sitting at a desk all day, typing on front of the computer, texting on the phone. We don't spend a whole lot of time going through full ranges of motion. We basically get the same diet of movement patterns every single day. And that same diet of movement patterns is not a good thing because what happens is your body starts to lose some mobility. So for example, if 
if you lose ankle mobility, the ability really just really to, to pull the top of your foot up to your shin, kind of like this, decrease the angle. Um, what happens is if you lose ankle mobility, something has to sacrifice stability. So what happens is the knee starts to sacrifice some stability. And um, that's not a good thing because when the knee starts to sacrifice stability so you can get through a full, through a full range of motion and bend down and tie your shoes or, or do athletic moves, over the course of time, that's not going to be good for the, for the knee and eventually you're going to end up with pain and you're going to end up with injury. If the hip loses some mobility, and if you think about all the time we spend sitting and in the same postures, the hip moves in three planes of motion. It moves forwards and backwards, side to side, and rotationally. So when we lose the mobility of the hip, something has to sacrifice some stability. So when you bend down to tie your shoe or you drop into a deep squat, if your hip doesn't have that full range of motion, the knee has to sacrifice some stability. And what also has a tendency to happen is the lower back sacrifices a whole lot of stability as well. And this is when we end up with back pain. The shoulder is a whole, a whole little different, it's not a whole different, but it, it's a little bit different because we have so much interacting all at the same time. Uh, the thoracic spine, if you think about it, we spend a lot of time hunched over in this forward posture where we're typing on a computer, we're sitting, uh, we're texting on our phone. What happens is people start to lose the mobility of their thoracic spine. They lose the ability to extend and to be able to rotate. And um, when that happens, the shoulder blade's ability to move on the rib cage has to sacrifice a little bit. So we sacrifice, since we lost mobility to thoracic spine, we sacrifice some stability at the shoulder blade. When we sacrifice stability, that's not good because we're gonna have to sacrifice some mobility at the shoulder joint. And you can see how this really quickly can turn into a whole bunch of problems. And uh, it's really, a lot of times, it's not necessary, and again, these are, I'm speaking in general terms, but a lot of times, it's not the knee pain or the lower back pain. It's not the low back that's causing the problem. It has to do a lot of the times with the hip. The hip's losing mobility. A lot of times when people come in with knee pain, well, they're, lo they're losing a lot of ankle mobility and they lost a lot of hip mobility. So we can improve uh, your, your own fitness and your own health and how you move just by making sure we're mobilizing the correct joints at the same time. So what my, first of all, this video is gonna lay the, the, the groundwork. If you understand this concept where mobility and stability and mobility and stability and the joint by joint approach where things are stacked on top of each other, one joint's designed to be mobile, one joint's designed to be stable. If a joint loses its stability, then the other joint has to sacrifice some, some mobility and it gives some stability. If a joint loses its mobility, then the other joint has to sacrifice some of its stability to keep you, your body functioning so you can do these full ranges of motion. Um, although they're not perfectly functional full ranges of motion, they're dysfunctional full ranges of motion, you're still able to um, achieve the task at hand that your body's trying to do. So if you understand this concept, we're gonna break off, and in future videos, we're gonna talk about the knee, we're gonna talk about the lower back, we're gonna talk about the shoulder, and give you an idea of what you can do to take better care of those joints and keep the things that are mobile, designed to be mobile, mobile, keep the things that are designed to be stable, stable, and keep you feeling and moving better. Now, at the end of this video, I want to give you a tip that you guys can do right before you go out to your next paddle match because I don't want to leave you hanging. So the next time you go out and play paddle, when you go to warm up, if you think about warming up just like this, take some time, loosen up your ankle, loosen up your hip, loosen up your upper back. If you take that time to just mobilize those three areas, you're gonna, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna move better, and your chances of injury are gonna come down. So I hope that makes sense to you. Again, mobility, stability, mobility, stability, mobility, stability, mobility. What do you wanna do when you go head out to your next paddle match? Take some time, mobilize the ankles, mobilize the hips, mobilize the thoracic spine. And um, in future videos, we'll show you how to do some specific exercises to mobilize those areas. And uh, we'll talk about some shoulder pain, some knee pain, and some lower back pain. Uh, look forward to seeing you in those videos, and uh, thanks for watching.